Welcome to Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. SPNN presents St. Paul City Conference football, the Central Minutemen and the Arlington Phoenix. Hello, everyone. I'm Todd Johnson along with Dan Flanagan. We are live from Griffin Stadium, and this game is just underway as the Central Minutemen are on offense. Central establishing the run early. Raheem Shabazz running it five yards up the middle. And we'll set the lines for you momentarily. Pitch back to the right side. And a pretty good defensive play by the Phoenix. Held up that time by a number four. Justin Jones. That'll bring up a third down. We apologize, we missed the opening kickoff for you. Current situation is third and five for the Central Minutemen. Led in offense by number 16, quarterback Joe Borer, six foot, 208 pound junior. And they have a couple of big weapons on offense and we expect to see them shortly, namely number 22, Adrian Perryman. He lines up in a slot to the left. Borer looks that way, pass is caught off to the right side, a first down, John Berry and the central Minutemen get the ball up near midfield. Strong throw there by Borer. Borer we were watching him in the opening warmups. He's got a cannon on him. And a nice strong throw there. He'll get a look at the replay. I thought for a moment they were looking Perryman's way. Perryman lined up in the slot to the left, but Borer catches the pass. And that's good for a first down. So the central the minimum. bang there on the stop. Out of the eye formation. Shabazz the deep back. And this is Shabazz looking for a hole and he's got some running room up the middle. And he is near another first down, Raheem Shabazz. He runs hard, 5'8", 205 pound senior. And you'll hear his name a lot this evening on defense because he can hit you. 10 tackles that last week against the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. So does a little bit of everything for the Central Minutemen. Central playing Creighton last week about as competitively as any team has in a while. And Shabazz a big part of that. They're gonna keep things as simple as they can on offense tonight. Try to run it right up the middle at Arlington. And again, they give it up the middle. Off to the left side. There's a hole off to the right side. Some running room to the 25, to the 20, to the 10, five. Touchdown St. Paul Central. We'll take a look at the touchdown here. Central really establishing the run early. It does not take them long. Well, here you can look at the replay. Just a little run up the middle, and it turned into big yardage. Finding his blocks as he sees the opening on the outside. Couple missed tackles there. And just running into the corner of the end zone, fighting his way just across the goal line. But Central, a great job as they, take the, as they get the early six. And the extra point is good. And Central takes the opening kickoff. And they lead by a score of seven to nothing. Nice 42 yard run there for the Minutemen. And so they got uh, offense, couldn't go any better for them. We'll see what they can try to establish early on here on defense as you see the score, seven nothing Central. And we're just two and a half minutes into this game, so the Minutemen really doing what they needed to do early in the game here. Well, Arlington won the toss. Interesting enough, they deferred, and Central took advantage and marched right downfield in a opening score. And just like that, Central on top, seven to nothing. Interesting decision there. Usually in high school, you, and in most levels, you want to get that ball right away. But wonder what Scott Wolf's strategy was there. Well, here's an interesting kickoff formation. If you can uh, get a look at the central special teams. Go, Ernest, hit somebody now, baby. Go, Walker. Can't say I've seen this formation. They may spread out wide after this, and here they go. And the kickoff is fielded at the 15, to the 20, to the 30 yard line, and to about the 35 yard line. That's Anthony Patterson, and we'll get our first look at the Arlington Phoenix. And Dan, 
some uh, kind of bad luck for Arlington. Starting quarterback Giovanni Cabreri came down with a virus, and he is out tonight. So Ben Campbell, a versatile player, will move up from his tailback position to play quarterback. Got to be a nice situation for Arlington. You don't like to see the quarterback go out early, but to have a versatile player like a Campbell, kind of like Cordell Stewart when he first came in with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we have a whistle. And looks like they're going to look for a, uh, not for a minute, perhaps a new football. And yeah, that it is. Center didn't like the football, so they're going to get a replacement. Well, the key to the Arlington offense tonight, number 31, Thomas Durham. He's been banged up a bit this season, but he can do it all. 5'860 pounder and be interesting to see with the backup quarterback in there if Arlington tries to establish the run a little bit more early. We've seen them try to throw the ball a little bit in their first couple games that we've broadcast. Kabat in motion to the top of your screen. And this is Durham off to the right side. Durham lowers his head out to about the 38 yard line. And that's something you like to see in a running back. Someone who's gonna deliver as much punishment as he received. And there you saw Durham lower his head for a couple extra yards. That'll bring up uh, second down and about six to go. And hope, again, a big, hope a big guy like that can tire him out a little bit here as the game goes along. Just picking up the extra yardage, he's gonna fight. And defense takes a few hits like that. Maybe that wears them down if Arlington, Arlington can control the clock a bit. Second down and six. Three wide receiver, four wide receiver formation for the Phoenix. Blitz is on. Campbell throws and it's caught by Riley near midfield. Riley has the first down. Good first throw there for Campbell. Yeah, very good throw. Dan Riley is one of the more explosive players on the Arlington Phoenix. He's been a big play receiver his entire career, career here at Arlington. He said. Interceptions for returns, kickoff returns. And there you see, just finds the opening. A little seam, and that's good for the first down. Going to be interesting to watch the back and forth between him and Adrian Perryman tonight. Once again, out of the eye formation from the 46-yard line. And ball is loose, and the Central Minutemen recover. Well, a tough break for the Phoenix. Looked like a problem with the exchange between Ben Campbell and Thomas Durham, and we told you a moment ago, Giovanni Cabreri, the starting quarterback, is out, and there you see it. Just not used to each other. Looked like Durham tried to get going maybe a bit early, and that's just what you see maybe when you get some of the backups in there, especially Campbell playing other positions, and tough break for Arlington. After the touchdown, they would have liked to establish a little more momentum than that. Yeah, it looked like they were building some momentum. 8-19 to go here in the first quarter. Live from Griffin Stadium, Central Minutemen and the Arlington Phoenix. And this is Shabazz, got a hole up the middle. Raheem Shabazz into the secondary to the 30 yard line. Boy, great job by the offensive line and we'll set it for you while we have a moment. Noah Gagner, 6'2", 230 junior. Number 55, Chris Gustafson, 6'1", 220 pound senior. Brandon Jones, six foot, 205 junior. 63, Mark Thurow, 6'1", 260 junior. Devin Jones, 68. 6'5", 280 pounds senior. You gotta and like the central running game. They got some big play receivers, but they will run it, at, run it at you all night long. And this is Thompson, the tailback, off to the left side. Thompson has some running room. He's got the first down. Boy, Central really throwing everything at Arlington here. Good run that time off the left side by Marquise Thompson. Mixing it up a little bit. They go Shabazz up the middle, then send Thompson to the outside. Keeping that defense get, guessing. They don't know whether to spread out or try to clog the middle. As Marquise Thompson, the sophomore running back. From the 16 yard line, Barry splits wide to the right side. They keep it on the ground, up the middle. Still moving his feet. Boy, a great run that time. Number 36, Brian McIntosh. Strong run there by the fullback. Shades of Mike Allstott running over people there as he just keeps the legs moving and keeping the defenders bouncing off him. You see him go up the middle, looks like he's wrapped up. McIntosh doesn't want to give up. He finds that outside, 
gets some extra yardage, making those defenders work if they want to get him down. Well, a couple yard gain on that last play, second and eight, and we have a whistle and a timeout call by the Arlington Phoenix. And while we have a moment, we will set the officiating crew for you. The referee for tonight's game is Frank McGivern. The umpire is Craig Armstrong, linesman Ken Veerling, the line judge, Carl Krugel, and the back judge is David Webb. I think good time out there by Arlington. You know, they're kind of back on their heels right now. Maybe try to fire these guys up a little bit. Let them know it's still early. Let's not get our heads down too far and try to bounce back, maybe make a stand here, take some of Central's confidence away a bit. Well, Arlington has a little momentum coming into this game. A big win last week against Como Park and a win that head coach Kevin Wolf, you see there on your screen, said, boy, we really need it. And there's, there's no better remedy than a win. Yeah, especially strong defensive performance, only giving up six points with some of the players Como Park has. And ho you hope they can build on that and maybe turn things around a bit here. Well, their backs are against the wall here. Central on the 15-yard line, second down and eight. You have to see the ball into the hands of Adrian Perryman, but so many other weapons, including number 20, Velvin Cobbins. And a little counter play up the middle. McIntosh again, the fullback, diving for a yard or two. As Central with a third and long coming up. Well, once again, Adrian Perryman checks into the game. Perryman on the season, 15 receptions, 160 yards, and a touchdown. Those numbers don't jump out at you, but he is getting double, triple coverage, and for good reason. He is one of the fastest football players in the state, getting a lot of Division I looks, and he lines up in a slot to the right side. And Borer's looking that way, and Borer is sacked for a loss. Big play by the Arlington defense. Well, strong pressure there up the middle. Is there Scott Howell trying to get it to his big play receiver, but the Arlington defense not letting him. As we look at the replay here, just kind of sandwiching him. As you see, number 88, uh, number 88 for Arlington. Lawrence Erskine. Lawrence Erskine. So Dragging that'll bring up down fourth forward. down. And they're going to go for it here. Fourth and 16. And when you have Adrian Perryman, that's worth it. A whistle and a flag. Well, that doesn't help. We might be able to pick it. Probably trying, maybe trying the hard snap count there. So I don't know. Fourth and long wouldn't help them too much, but just running out of time. Well, as you probably can tell, we have a field mic that picks up uh, a lot of sounds. A lot of intensity down on that field. Makes you feel like you're standing right there. Well, fourth and 21, and look for them to just throw it over to Perryman. Gore under pressure, throws it off, and that ball bounced. They're gonna call it a complete pass. He's well short of the first down. The officials didn't pick that up, though. Well, unless they're saying it was a lateral. In that case, it'd be a fumble. Well, good pressure again by Arlington. They're trying to get that ball to Perryman, but the penetration coming through and forward. Well, here, you just decide for yourself, is this a fumble? Well, it looks like a forward pass to me. That's an incomplete pass. Well, I think. If you're an Arlington fan, I think you might be thinking you ought to have the ball further upfield because that was about a 10 yard run after the play. They do take over on downs, though. Oh, well, give the Arlington defense credit. Maybe that timeout helped. You don't know what the coaches said to him, but a little more intensity after they took that timeout coming in and stopping the central offense. Well, Dan Riley split out wide. He is one on one with Adrian Perryman. That's a great matchup. And let's see if they go that way. Well, kind of a Statue of Liberty to Durham. Durham trying to get around the corner. Durham picks up maybe a yard. Tough play there. Central, some good speed, able to get to the sidelines and catch up to Durham. Well, it's really an interesting subplot. I like that lineup 
you always want to put your best player on the other best player. You got Dan Riley, an experienced senior. He makes things happen out there. He's had some huge games throughout his high school career, and I'm sure he'd like nothing better than to have a big game against number 22, Adrian Perryman, who is getting quite a bit of interest from Division I scouts. Todd Johnson here along with Dan Flanagan, live from Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. Throws off to the right side. This is Durham. Durham spinning, twisting, but he cannot get away from the swarming St. Paul Central defense. And one of the things that the Arlington coaches are certainly aware of is that this Arlington defense comes after you. As you'll see on the replay, Durham looked for a moment. He might have some running room, but watch all of a sudden you see a those, sea of jerseys. Those red jerseys can close the gaps. They're trying to establish Thomas Durham early, but he's got nowhere to go. Chris Gustafson, the first one in on that stop. That'll bring up third down and 13. Once again, Riley split wide to the left side. Campbell under pressure. He's going to tuck it in and take it himself. Campbell picks up about four, but well short of the first down. And yeah. that'll bring up a punting situation for the Phoenix. Got to be impressed with both teams' pass rush here early on, not giving the quarterbacks time to get every, anything set up. And Campbell's not afraid to tuck it in. I mean, he's, he's a good runner, and normally plays running back. And that's one of those plays, Dan, you may call it a... Well, it wasn't a sack, but a coverage sack. There was just was nobody open. Yeah. Well, we got the punt coming up here. Always a dangerous play. But this one's right on target. Big rush, and it's partially blocked by Perryman. And the ball goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, Adrian Perryman, known for his running skills, Bursts through the line, and I think he got a hand on that ball. We'll see if we can pick it up on the replay. It looked to me like he did. Yep, Comes there's Perryman. Through around the corner, gets in front, and yep, he, he deflected that one, I think. Well, the Arlington, Arlington coaches will be disappointed in looking at this replay because he came in virtually untouched. And a big play, a big time player like Perryman, you got to pick him up there on the corner. He hasn't gotten involved in the receiving end yet, but he's going to get uh, find a way to get involved and make big plays, whether it's on offense, defense, or special teams. Well, the last time Perryman was on SPN, he had a touchdown offense, defense, and special teams. Again, they keep it around to Shabazz. Shabazz bounces off a couple of tacklers. Shabazz to the 20, to the 15. Raheem Shabazz to the nine yard line. Boy, he is a tough runner. Raheem Shabazz just barreling his way through the line. Well, he's a big a big guy in there, 5'8", 205, and he just bounces off people coming up the middle. Watch this, boom. Shedding tacklers. Notice he just keeps his legs moving. Very tough to bring down. Finally, Dan Riley grabbed him from behind. It's taken about two or three Arlington players to get him down. From the nine yard line. We have a whistle and a flag. And we'll see if we can pick this one up for you. Well, if you're the central Minutemen, you really want to punch one in here. It appears the flag will be against Arlington. Croachman on the defense. Boy, that's another one that just kills you as a coach. You don't want to make it any easier, especially here in the red zone. Yeah, you talked about them trying to get in the end zone. They need to punch it in here. They've pretty much controlled the clock, but Arlington makes another stop here. All of a sudden, Central's controlled the first quarter, but they're only up 7-0. That gives Arlington a little bit of confidence, maybe, to stay in it, as opposed to if Central can make it 14-0. Well, first down at the four-yard line. And they keep it on the ground. Not much running room. Nice play there by Gary Sabby, the sophomore, number 76, just wrapping him up. As you saw, Thelvin Cobbins trying to come through, but Sabi was just all over him. He wasn't going to get anywhere. Well, officially no gain on the play. Minute 33. 
Central knocking on the door. Of course, the key play here was a block punt by Perryman. And this is Shabazz. Shabazz, maybe a yard. Again, good play up front by the Arlington defense. 55, Gare Vang. 61, Mike Bellamy. Number 77, one of the keys to the Arlington defense, Andrew Franklin. 6'1", 240-pound sophomore. He's plugging up the middle. And number 88, Lawrence Erskine. 5'11", 180-pound senior. Arlington plugging up those holes when Central gets inside the 10. If you're a coach, you want to see him trying to do that the whole way. Letting them get down there and then making some stands as we see third and goal here. Shabazz the tailback, and they give it to Shabazz. He drops the football. Ball is loose, and Borer falls on the ball. Boy, that was almost a disastrous play for Central. That ball bounced perhaps a little bit to the right. A Phoenix may have been in position to take it 90 Shabazz yards just, for a touchdown. Shabazz just bobbling it there. Looks like he never quite got it in. Got the handoff, and then it just slips loose. Heads up play by Borer getting over there to fall on it. Well, that may very well have been the last play of the first quarter, just five seconds. And they are gonna let the clock wind down. And that does mark the end of the first quarter here from Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. Our score, the St. Paul Central Minutemen seven, the Arlington Phoenix nothing. Central got on the board early on a big run by Velvin Cobbins. Well, a cleanly played first, the first quarter, moved pretty quickly, didn't have a lot of penalties or anything, but if you're Central, you can't be too happy with some of the miscues. They're moving the ball down, getting it inside the 10, but then we're seeing some of the things like the fumbles, and except on that first touchdown, Arlington able to shut it down once Central moves it down the field, and I think that's what Scott Howell's got to talk about his to his offense about, doing a great job getting it down there. Now we just got to punch it in. But we start the second quarter here, Central on top, seven to nothing. They've pretty much controlled the time of possession. And as, as I said, not a lot of penalties or anything. It's been a, been a pretty crisply played first quarter. And we'd like to thank our sponsors. Support for this comes from Liberty State Bank, Danny Boy's Cheeseburgers, Metro Athletics, and Schmitty Sports Barbers. Thanks again to our sponsors for making this all possible. And we're going to have a field goal attempt. Ruzbet Toliati. Snap set, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Strong kick there, probably about a 28, 29 yarder by Tuolati as Central takes the 10 nothing lead with 11.52 to go here in the second quarter. Take a look at the kick. Nice and straight, getting it through the uprights and that's a valuable weapon to have. As we've seen it in the St. Paul City Conference. There's some good kickers. If you can have that on a high school team, very big, as sometimes games will come down to missed extra points, missed field goals. But a nice strong kick there by Tuolati. Well, unofficially, we'll call that a 28-yard field goal. And, Dan, you're right. It's a, it's a rare commodity, really. Uh, you don't see a lot of field goal attempts, but Tuolati... Showed some good leg there. Ruzbet Toliati, 5'770 pound senior. And he puts the Minutemen up by a score of 10 to nothing. Boy, take a look at this special team setup by Central. If you can get a shot of this. I'd be interested to see what Scott Howell's reasoning behind this setup is. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Well, that's not the way they designed it on the drawing board. That kick goes out of bounds. And the yardage will be marked off. Ball will be set at the 35-yard line. Well, this has always been a, uh, it's been a pretty competitive series over the years. Not a long history between these two teams. Central leading the, the series three games to two. And we've had some dramatic games between these two teams. The most memorable coming a couple of years ago. Went down to the final play of the game. Arlington was down by eight. They tied it with no time left. Final play of the game, two-point conversion was incomplete in Central 1 in very dramatic fashion. 
Well, and a couple games ago, I remember you talked to Scott Howell. He was kind of kind of giving Colby a little bit of ribbon about that about that game. Of course, Colby McDonough was coach at that time. From the 35-yard line, Campbell gives it off to Durham. Durham, a couple of yards, but pretty good tackle that time. Sixty-four, Marlon Tucker in on the stop, along with seventy, Noah Gagner. Second down, one yard on that last pickup. It'll be interesting to see here if Arlington tries to spread it out a little bit, get it to a player like a Dan Riley. We've seen a lot of Thomas Durham here in the early going, but not a lot of, Ry of Riley and some of their other offensive weapons. And they have the backup quarterback in. That could be part of it, but we'll see if they maybe try to take to the air here a bit. Blitz is on. Campbell. Passes incomplete. Pass intended for Riley. And defended by Maurice Fuller, the sophomore. Nice play there getting in and breaking it up. Boy, Central puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They had five down linemen and a blitzing linebacker. So they're not going to give Ben Campbell much time at all. And probably not a bad game plan. Seeing that Campbell not the regular quarterback for Arlington, so. Yeah, try to rattle him early, take advantage of some of the inexperience at quarterback. Third and nine from the 36 yard line. Once again, Ben Campbell trying to get something going offensively. Another blitz. Campbell under big pressure. Campbell got his man. Is that Luke Cabot on the far side? Number 83, Luke Cabot comes up with the big catch. A nice play by Campbell. He's got the blitz coming from his uh, from his uh, from that side there, and he just goes the other way, eludes it, uses his speed, and then a nice strong on the run throw to Cabot, who gets it on the sideline, and that's a heady play by Ben Campbell, avoiding the blitz and making a nice throw for the first down. Well, Campbell, as we said, is a good athlete. In fact, uh, he's a track athlete, runs the triple jump and the long jump. I guess you don't run the triple jump. Oh, gee, they back off the blitz there. Off to the left side. Durham forward for a couple more. Well, Arlington, Arlington has done some nice things offensively. Their first series interrupted by a fumble, a bad exchange between Ben Campbell and Thomas Durham. A block punt on their second possession. And Kevin Wolf open this one. Results in some points. They have the ball at midfield, second down and five. Obetta and Riley split wide to the far side. Obetta now in motion to the bottom of the screen. This is Durham. Durham spinning. Durham fighting, but it's tough to get much penetration through the middle of that central defense. They're not giving him too much there. Only about two yards on that play. It'll bring up third down. Ben Campbell coming towards the sidelines. Interesting to see what they try to do here. It'll be third down about four. And they need to get a couple more conversions, try to get, try to get some points on the board. 9.20 in the second quarter. Central on top, 10 to nothing. If you look at the Arlington cheerleaders, have some their warm-up jackets tonight, but actually a pretty nice evening here in late September in Minnesota. Campbell back to pass. Got his man. Oh, it's incomplete. Pass intended for Obetta. And that'll bring up fourth down and a punting situation. Well, the pressure factoring in again there. Campbell, Campbell just having to make those quick throws. And it's tough to get much, start, much started then. Throw just a ball just a little bit underthrown as he's trying to escape the rush, get it, get rid of it. Well, keep in mind the last punt was blocked. Well, hopefully they'll be able to put a man on Perryman this time. Durham standing at his 37-yard line. Big rush, and he gets off a pretty good kick end over end. Cobbins waiting for it at the 15. He better get out of the way. And may have touched one of the Phoenix and let's say one of the Minutemen and Arlington has the football. Well, I started to say they better move away from the football. Cobbins was there along with 
take a look Number at it here. Number 31, Stephen Jobert. And this is a great kick by Durham with the pressure in his face. One thing you'll hear the coaches yell is fire. Stay away from the ball and watch. Cobbins just getting a little close. And yep, that glances off his leg. Or actually it may have. Or no, maybe may it hit the off blocker. Of Jobert, but a big break and a big momentum change here in this ball game. 8.47 to go here in the second quarter. Arlington, a golden opportunity from the 14 yard line. Central showing blitz and they do and Durham oh. is buried in the backfield by Shabazz. Raheem Shabazz. Coming through a big hit there. Well, Central had everyone coming there. Loss of three on that play. As you take a look at Thomas Durham. Football's a game of momentum. And the momentum in the, on Arlington side, but a big play defensively for Central, perhaps quells that a bit. Two wide receivers right, Campbell under big pressure. Campbell gonna tuck it in, Campbell. To about the 14 yard line. Knocked out of bounds. Boy, he is running for his life. He has got no time to establish anything back there in that pocket. As again, the pressure coming. Campbell able to get outside, but there is nowhere to go. Dawkins and Shabazz. It'll bring up third down and nine. Ball sitting at about the 14 yard line on the near hash mark. Well, really you're in two down territory here. Four wide receivers for the Phoenix. Quarterback draw and nothing doing. Campbell is sacked for a loss. Such great penetration up the middle. There. 77 there Cornelius to Tolbert. And that'll bring up fourth down and Arlington gonna try to punch one in from the 19 yard line. And the pressure rests on the shoulders of that young man, Ben Campbell, thrust into the starting lineup here. And now a timeout called by the Central Minutemen. Boy, this game really breezing by, 7.20 to go. Had a little bit of everything so far. Big run on offense. Velvin Cobbins, long touchdown run to start the game. Had a block punt. Had, Had a 28-yard field goal, and that's where we stand. 10-0 is our score. Well, Dan Flanagan, if you're the coach, this is what's easy about being up here in the booth. You get to play yeah. coach. What do you call here? Fourth and 15. Well, I, I try to get the ball into the hands of Dan Riley, but the key's going to be getting uh, picking up that center blitz from from the Minutemen. You try to get the ball to Riley, and that's probably what they've been trying to do, but Campbell, no chance to get it to him. That blitz coming and getting in his face, so you focus on trying to pick up Shabazz, pick up some of those guys coming up the middle, and then hopefully find one of your big play receivers down along the sidelines. Well, you've seen Campbell now starting to sprint out to avoid the rush, and he's had a couple of completions that way, and let's see what Kevin Wolf has drawn up. Riley is split wide to the very top of your screen. Maybe some type of bootleg here could be a possibility, get outside. Tristan Hurd in motion to the bottom. Campbell under big pressure again. Campbell all the way back to the 40 yard line. A flag is down, it could be a face mask. So hold everything, fourth and 15. A huge loss, but let's see the call. And it is a face mask against the Central Minutemen. Here's the replay. Well, that's a huge break. I saw the coaches jumping up and down, angry that Campbell was kind of running backwards there, there giving up is. the yardage. But you see Devontae Duncans just kind of dragging him down by the face mask there, and he's celebrating, but that's a 15-yard penalty. So a good break for Arlington. 
And you see when we will replay this game, it'll be Sunday, September 29th at 1 p.m., Wednesday, October 2nd at 7.30, and that will be on SPNN Channel 19 in St. Paul. So a big penalty gives the Phoenix a first down from, their, uh, from the Central 19. Six fifty-eight, two wide receivers to the left. Again, another big, big break for the Arlington Phoenix. Campbell, looking for Riley. He's got him open, Riley. To the 18 yard line. Well, oh, well executed play. Found a little seam in the secondary and Campbell put it right there. That's what they've been trying to do. They get Campbell some time, and he's able to do something with it, finding Riley on the outside just in front of the defender. And that's what they need to do, a nice a seven yard gain. But the key is giving Ben Campbell some time to do something. Seven yards on that last pickup, 6.05 to go here in the first half. Central on top 10, nothing, but Arlington knocking on the door. And another whistle. Get some movement here. Delay of, game. Uh, delay of game. Seen that a couple times now, one from both sides. Oh, that's frustrating. And you can see to purchase a copy of this program, send $25 to SPNN at 214 East 4th Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55101. And please specify the game and date that you would like to purchase. But if you're a parent of a player or something, this is a great this is a great keepsake to have for your son to watch as he, and remember his high school playing days. Second and eight from the 24-yard line. Here comes a blitz again. It's picked up. And this pass is incomplete. We've got more flags. Well, you probably picked it up right there. A legal procedure on the offense, and this so drive is sputtering. Arlington getting moved back, two straight penalties, and you don't like to see that. If you are Scott Wolf, they're just they were just or Kevin Wolf, excuse me, if they were just moving the ball down, and now you got two penalties. All of a sudden, you're backed up in a second and long. Second down and 13. Riley at the top of your screen. Actually, there he is at the top of your screen. Campbell over the middle, and it is incomplete. Well, trying to find Tristan Hurt over the middle. Number two, the receiver, almost got him. The ball just a little too tall for Hurt. Look at Shabazz coming over the middle. Coming right through the middle. Oh, he had him. Very close. That was six points right there. But again, tremendous pressure by this central defense. 5.21 to go, second quarter, 10-0 central. Arlington facing a third down and 13. Four wide receivers from the 28. Campbell going for it all for Durham. And this one is picked off. Picked off at the 15 yard line. He's got some running room. To the 40, to the 50, and finally brought down at the 44 yard line. That's number 84, Matthew Danielson. Danielson going up top, picking it, and a great return coming back for Central. And you hate to see that if you're Arlington. They moved it down so well, and then a turnover. Campbell just throwing it up for grabs, kind of a bit too high for Durham and Danielson able to get in there, pick up some blockers, and he's got the pick and a long return as Central will have it in Arlington territory. They'll get it at the Arlington 45 to be exact. And they're gonna keep it on the ground. This is Cobbins, Cobbins breaks one tackle out to the 45 yard line.
Hobbins unable to get too much there. Looks like maybe even lost a yard. See if Central keeps it on the ground here as Cobbins checks out. Well, they have a 10-0 lead. Rotating in those running backs. Now Marquise Thompson in as the deep back. Play action. Thompson off to the right. Thompson puts a move on Riley. Thompson still moving. Marquise Thompson. Boy, a great little run. First down to the 30-yard line. Boy, he was like a water bug there just spinning across the field. Very elusive. Arlington had him wrapped up. They just couldn't bring him down. Slipping away. And you see the contrast in styles. Raheem Shabazz who's going to knock you over. And then Marquise Thompson. Watch this move right here. He's putting the moves on people. He lowers his shoulder a couple of times, too. He's listed at 5'2", 150. He's got some courage to be out there. Yeah. And a little delay to Cobbins. Cobbins looking for a hole up the middle. Velvin Cobbins brought down after maybe a, a yard gain. Breaking a couple of tackles there, but pretty well wrapped up. Nowhere to go. That'll bring up second down. Second down and 10. Well, Arlington's still in this ball game. Clearly, he scores just 10 to nothing. And they've had a couple of excellent opportunities, just haven't been able to convert. Second down from the 31. Borer, he's going for it all, looking for Perryman. Perryman has it. And they're saying that. Oh. That ball was taken call away. That one intercepted. Miracle Obeda just took it away from Adrian Perryman for the interception. I got to see this one on the replay. It looked as though Perryman had position, but a great play. Let's see it here. Well, they fooled me. It was up top. I thought Perryman see, had it too. He does, I think. And, and it looked like Obeda just wrestled that ball away. Well, a big interception. at the three yard line. Well, Kevin Wolf's gotta like that. I like the call by Central. They've been hey. playing it conservative, playing up the middle. All of a sudden you try to get Perryman out to Perryman. Yeah, you bet. The play was executed perfectly. Obeda just made a heck of a play. Keep in mind, Arlington deferred the coin toss and they'll get the ball to start the second half. Well, just over three minutes to go here at the timeout. Arlington will have one timeout remaining, 10 nothing Central. And Arlington will be backed up at their own three-yard line. It'll be interesting to see what they try to do here. Likely maybe establish Durham, one of the running backs, try to get themselves a bit more room. And then maybe use the passing game to try to get a score before halftime. Well, we talked a lot in the open here about Adrian Perryman. He's been... Rather quiet on the offensive side of the ball. He had a blocked punt. Yeah, other than the blocked punt, haven't called his name too much tonight. But the most important statistic is the one on the scoreboard right now. The central Minutemen on top by a score of 10 to nothing. And I'm sure Scott Howell will gladly take a 10 nothing score without any big stats. Because in the end, that's all that matters. Yes. And that is our score, Central on top, 10 to nothing. Continuing Cent to kind of sort things out here on both sides. Central coming off a win over the Highland Park Scots earlier in the year. That game was since ruled a forfeit. We can talk about that in a bit. As you mentioned, Central played the Creighton to Omaha Raiders. Very tough. They keep it on the ground. Boy, they're very near a safety. Good penetration there up the middle as they tried to get it to Ernest Walker, the sophomore running back, and he had nowhere to go. Lucky he stayed out of his own end zone. 2.44 and counting. Arlington would like to get some breathing room. 
The last thing you want to do is be punting from the back of your end zone here at the end of the first half. Central's already blocked a punt, so that, and the other punt had some people in the face of Thomas Durham, so want to get at least, at the very least, give your punter some room. Well, Durham is four yards back. I almost look for a quarterback sneak here just to get something up the middle. They keep it on the ground, and they have a safety. Well, your back is against the wall. You're on about the goal line. I don't know if I like that call running it outside. Well, let's take a look at the replay. I mean, Central just gives you such a, deep, a difficult look, and there's just nowhere to go. But good penetration, so 12-0 Central now with the safety. Well, you know, Dan, I think both teams looking at the scoreboard, Central looking at it saying, boy, we could be up more than 12-0, and Arlington saying, we could be we could be tied or be ahead yeah. in this game. Yeah, I mean, mistakes, costly mistakes made by both teams. You see Arlington, the block punt. And a couple turnovers, Central, a couple turnovers as well. So things could, things could be a lot different, but you've seen some mistakes, and I'm sure both coaches will be talking with their players about that at halftime. As the free kick coming up here now after the safety. Thomas Durham kicks it off, will well, kick it off. Yeah, there's still plenty of time for Central to punch another one in. Durham, the free kick from the 20 yard line. And the ever dangerous Adrian Perryman standing at his 35 yard line. He has a kickoff return for a touchdown already this year. And I'm sure Arlington wanna keep the ball out of his hands. Durham to Cobbins who at times is equally as dangerous. Cobbins sides up to tackler to the 45 and that's where he's wrapped up Good downfield coverage there. Nice tackle, Kyle Vang on the stop, number 50. So Central takes over at their own 45 with 2.06 to go in the first half. The Minutemen leading it 12 to nothing. And as Todd said, plenty of time to maybe try to add to that lead here before they go into the, uh, into the locker room. Well, Joe Borer leading the Minutemen. Perryman in motion. Pitch back goes to Cobbins. Cobbins cuts to the right. Cobbins spins into the secondary. Still on his feet. Velvin Cobbins to the 39-yard line. Those central running backs keep moving. Very hard to bring down all three of them. As Velvin Cobbins, you look at the replay, finds his hole. And some elusiveness gets away from one tackle there. Two guys have him. They can't bring him down. And finally, about three or four Phoenix able to bring him down, but he does not go down easy. 145 and counting. Ball at the 39-yard line. Four wide receivers. Let's see if Central is going to put one up. Borer over the middle, and this one is picked off. At the 30 yard line to the 40, looking for a block and a huge hit. Ball is loose. Are you kidding me? And Central got well, it back, it appeared. Well, Arlington walking off the field with the ball. Anthony and Patterson on the pick. Anthony Patterson read that one perfectly. He was right in position. Boy, this has been a strange football game. Every time you think this game's gonna turn, something happens. They have a turnover, a block punt, a penalty, a safety. Now Arlington has a chance to score here before the first half. Well, that's one of the great things about sports. You just never know what's gonna happen. Four wide receivers. Campbell's been under tremendous pressure the entire game. And once again, Campbell somehow gets out of the block. Campbell to the 45. Campbell spins to the 42-yard line. 117 and counting. Very athletic run there. Well, that's Campbell. been one of the more effective plays for Arlington. Central's brought the rush, but Campbell's athletic enough to get away. You see him here. He almost get slips, out of that one. but he still finds a way through. 
and taking his speed up the sidelines, makes a couple more moves. Very nice run for Ben Campbell. Gustafson drilled him from behind. A minute four from the 43-yard line. Campbell to Kabat, the tight end, and he's got the near a first down. Luke Kabat, a one-handed catch. And a timeout is called. And we're going to send Dan Flanagan out of the booth, down the field, see if he can get Scott Howard, one of the central coaches as the first half nears the end 44 seconds to go central hanging on to a 12 nothing lead but arlington driving here late in the half as you get a look at kevin wolf again trying to orchestrate a scoring drive here before the first half. Once again, both teams have had a lot of opportunities. Arlington very frustrated, certainly being on the short end of a 12-0 game, but they are far from out of it. You get a look at the Arlington cheerleading squad. Nine yards on that last pickup, second and one. Two wide receivers to the left. Central showing blitz. Now they back off. Campbell over the middle, and it is knocked down by Gustafson, pass intended for Durham, and that was a dangerous pass. Looking for Durham over the middle, and big Chris Gustafson got his hand on it. As you see on the replay right there. And Arlington, probably fortunate that was not picked off. Chris Gustafson. Once again, Central showing blitz. Campbell, pass intended for Riley is incomplete. Kind of short hopped it. And that'll bring up fourth down. Well, they still need one yard to go. Boy, a big play here for Arlington. It's like a squadron right. Three wide receivers. And some movement on the left side of the line. Look like Sabby may have stood up out of his stance a bit too early. And that indeed is the call. Boy, Kevin Wolf just shaking his head on the near sidelines. Seems whenever you whenever you at least need a penalty, that's when they're popping up. They'll bring up fourth down and seven to go. Well, they're going to stick with that squadron right. Interesting formation. Seen a couple of formations tonight I haven't seen before. Campbell looks right, throws, and it is in and out of the hands of Riley. Well, it looked like that squadron right formation opened up a seam. Central perhaps confused on the coverage. Riley normally hangs on to those, and he, I'm sure he'd like that one back. Here you see on the replay. Ball was out in front of him a little bit, but I'm sure that's what he'd like back. Well, just 29 seconds to go. Once again, Arlington not able to convert on a pretty good opportunity to score. 
Perryman in motion to the top of your screen. And a little delay to Perryman. He's got some running room. Perryman looking for a block to the 45, and he's knocked out of bounds. Reminded me of the old Statue of Liberty play used to do in the backyard. Borer held the ball back and just brought it down for Perryman coming the other way. Well, you couldn't quite see the fake there, but very well executed. And Central looking for ways to get the ball into Perryman's hands. And you certainly don't want to give any running room to number 22, because if there's a foot race, he's going to win. And a whistle, and it looks like it's going to be a delay of game. Raheem Shabazz was trying to get off the field, so a little confusion for Central. And the penalties, as you may have heard from the public address announcers, too many men on the field. Shabazz sprinting off, but perhaps not fast enough. So it'll bring up first and 15. Central on top by a score of 12 to nothing. Perryman again in motion. Pitch back to Cobbins. Cobbins got a lot of running room. Velvin Cobbins to the 30, to the 25, to the 20. Velvin Cobbins is going to score, but hold everything. A flag is down in the backfield. And let's see what the call is. Got a flag somewhere? Back here. Back here on the side. Boy, Velvet Cobbins has had a couple of huge runs tonight. But this one's coming back. I don't think I've seen so many wasted opportunities in a one half in a long, long time. Both coaches just got to be shaking their heads. Central's had a chance to blow this game open. And come up with an interception, some penalties. Arlington also has had a number of opportunities in the red zone, unable to convert. And a timeout on the field by Central, just six seconds to go. That's our score from Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. Central got on the board first with a 60 yard touchdown run by Velvin Cobbins. Came back with a couple of big plays, a block punt, and then a 28 yard field goal by a Roosbet. Toliati. And that made the score 10 to nothing. And then Arlington, after a big play, an interception, Miracle Obeta had the ball on their own two yard line. A couple plays later, they suffered a safety in their own zone. That's our score 12 0. Final play of the game. And Borer, flag is down. He's going to throw it. It is caught by Barry. A flag is down. Arlington leaving the field, but. And the flag is indeed on Central, and that is the final play of the first half. Once again, kind of an unusual first half. Opportunities on both sides of the field. But the score remains 12 to nothing. Scott Howell 
Getting an explanation on that final play from one of the officials. And we will see if we can get a word with the head coach on his way in. And Scott obviously not happy with the call there, having a discussion with the official. Well, once again, we'd like to thank our very generous sponsors who help bring coverage here on SPNN, Liberty State Bank, Danny Boy's Cheeseburgers, Metro Athletics, and Schmitty's Sports Barbers. And as quickly as we can, we're going to send it down to Dan Flanagan with a quick word from the central head coach on this unusual first half. Dan? I'm here with Central Coach Scott Howell. Coach, can I get some of your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, we're just not very pleased with, with what we've seen out here. I mean, every time we make a big play or get in good field position, we do something to put us back, and it's, that's just not good football right now. So obviously work on that. Anything else you're going to try to work on in the second half? Well, I think we got to come back and do like we did when we started the game, and that's establish our run. Defense is playing well right now. We just got to control the ball and stop making mistakes. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. Back up to Todd in the booth. Well, thanks, Dan. And uh, no real surprise, Scott Howell not happy uh, with his team because every time they really have had a chance to blow this game open, kind of shot themselves in the foot. But they'll certainly take the score here, 12-0 they're on top, but certainly they feel they should be on top by a much larger score. Scott Howell, of course, taking over the head coaching duties here a few years ago from longtime coach Floyd Smaller. Had a chance to talk to Scott before the game, and those of you who watch Golden Gopher football may recognize the name Jeremiah Carter. Carter was a lineman here at Centro, and... One of, the, one of those kind of players that develops late in his career, and he is now starting for the University of Minnesota. Didn't get a lot of attention here, and Floyd Smaller made the comment that this player will start for somebody in three, four years, and indeed he was uh, prophetic as Jeremiah Carter, former St. Paul Central player, now wearing the maroon and gold. Gets drafted in the later rounds, or you hear it a lot of times at the college level as well. Right. Well, I think in Jeremiah Carter's uh, situation, he was a 16-year-old senior, and you know, the growth spurt sometimes doesn't happen at 16. Yeah. And we've seen that before. Well, um, been some uh, outstanding players as we've talked throughout the season that have come out of the St. Paul City Conference, and uh, like to give you a chance to see and hear from some of these players. And before the game, uh, Dan, you had a chance to. Uh, sit down with one of the Arlington Phoenix players and we'll send it down now to that interview with Justin Jones. Hi, Dan Flanagan here with Arlington defensive standout Justin Jones. Now, Justin, the defense played pretty well last week in your win over Como Park. Tell me a little bit about that game and then also what you feel the defense has done so far this year. Well, our defense is doing pretty good this year. Como, we proved it because we played as a team and we shut them down pretty much. And you are a big part of that as a defensive back. Can you tell me a little bit about maybe some of the players you've tried to emulate as you've improved throughout your high school career? Well, what are you saying? Like, what what type of players have you look up, looked up to? What type of players, you know? Well, I looked up to Dan Riley. He's a good defensive player. And Robert Crump, they're pretty big on our defense. Okay. Um, and also, then, what are your what are your plans for next year? What do you plan on doing? Well, if my year keeps going as it is, I plan on going to college somewhere. Okay. Do you have any any thoughts on where you might like to go? No, nope, not right now. Not at the moment. 
Okay, well, also about halfway through the year now, what, what kind of a mid-season grade would you give yourself and your team? How do you think you guys are doing so far? It would be minus B, pretty good. Minus two B. What, yeah. what, what type of things would you like to improve on for the rest of the year? Pretty much just working as a team. That's all we need to do and keep winning. Okay, well, Justin, thank you very much for taking some time with us, and good luck the rest of the season. And you're watching St. Paul City Conference football here on SBNN. And indeed, you are watching St. Paul City Conference football. And uh, Justin Jones, very well-spoken young man. And uh, I know they're proud of all their players on the Arlington Phoenix. And he's uh, come a long way since his sophomore year and doing a great job. One of the second leading tackler for the Arlington Phoenix. Dan, I got to ask you, on that last play of the game, you were on your way down to the field. Uh, looked like the official had called a an illegal block that Scott Howell was very upset about. What, what was he saying down there? Well, the official was saying it was a cut block, and Scott Howell was saying the player was within the rules. It was it within a three-yard limit in the tight end box, and he was telling him that the same ruling had happened to them last week, and the official had faxed him saying he was incorrect, kind of just telling the official, look at your rule book, but the official was saying, you know, he did it on a linebacker. It's supposed to be on a defensive lineman. So some kind of ambiguous rules, and as the official mentioned, they're just trying to protect the player's safety out there. But, you know, there's there's some room for interpretation sometimes in some of those rules. Well, we appreciate Scott Howell taking a few minutes out to talk to you. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've said throughout the year, uh, all the coaches here in the St. Paul City Conference have been very gracious in allowing us to uh, – well, in some ways, kind of uh, impede on their normal routine, uh, getting their comments uh, at halftime, immediately after the game. Uh, coaches uh, generally are uh, very emotional, and it's hard for them sometimes. You obviously don't see that very often on the professional yeah. level or the collegiate level, although sometimes in the network games they'll do that. Um, but uh, we do appreciate uh, uh, them allowing us that sort of access. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. There's been several times this year, including that one just then, where I thought, well, you know, he's kind of in a bad mood. Maybe he's not going to want to talk. But you ask them, and they're, they're generally pretty kind about it. Well, as we uh, mentioned, it was an uh, unusual first half, and uh, we're going to bring you a look at some of the highlights here in the first half. And depending on which team uh, is your home team, maybe a highlight or a low light. Yeah, definitely one of the wilder first halves we've called yet this year. A lot of, a lot of big plays, turnovers, penalties. As, as I said, I mean, it's, it's one thing about high school football, really any game for that matter. You, you just never know what's going to happen. Sometimes you just you think a game's going to go one way and it, it turns the other. And, I've seen stranger things happen. This is only a 12-0 game. And uh, we'll get a look here at uh, Belvin Cobbins. And, boy, he made a heck of a run here. Yeah, that Cobbins move. just moving outside. Some great moves. Central three very good running backs as Cobbins getting into the end zone. Some of the turnovers we've talked about. Yeah, that was after a couple of good offensive plays. Bad exchange between Campbell and Durham, and Central took advantage. Well, actually, here was a opportunity for Arlington deep in their own territory. Uh, Central falling on the football. Again, one bounce a different way. Arlington may have taken it 90 yards. And here is a field goal. Nice strong kick Plenty of distance. There. Ruzbet Toliati. And here is nice punt by Durham. Yeah, here's here's the play though that uh, a couple of the central return men inadvertently touching the ball here. Yeah, right now they should be moving away from the ball, and the ball bounced off number uh, 31, Stephen Jobert, and Arlington though was unable to take advantage. Campbell's been under big pressure. Yeah, it's been a great pass rush all game long. Now here, you know, an, another mistake by Central. I mean, clear face masking penalty, and that gave Arlington another opportunity, which they could not convert. First down, I mean, Arlington surely just kicking themselves for some wasted opportunities. And 
Again, there was a pass intended for Durham. Matthew Danielson intercepting it. He made a nice run on this, too. So Central thinking, well, we're going to take advantage here and punch one in, and what happens? Interception. Well, this is just a great play. Miracle uh, Orbeta. Miracle Orbeta or just taking it away from Adrian Perryman and coming up with the interception. But and again, the safety. The safety. They were backed up deep after the interception and the pass rush getting to Campbell again. And Cobbins. Boy, he runs well. Boy, look how slippery, elusive. Boy, Central has a, as you mentioned, you know, number of weapons to throw at you. Uh, be interesting to see what the coaches talk about at, har at halftime. We kind of touched on it. Central, you're saying we can't keep giving them these opportunities. And Arlington, you're saying we keep getting all these opportunities and we don't have any points. So I think I think both coaches are going to have quite a bit to talk to their players about here at the ha at halftime. And we'll be interested. It'll be interesting to see which team responds better to that. Yeah, normally you see just one coach unhappy coming into halftime. There were two very unhappy coaches. And you can see why in some of those highlights. Great job. Uh, by the folks down in the truck, uh, bringing you a very accurate storyline of the first half. And if we could sum, or, sum it up in a couple of words, it'd probably be missed opportunities. Yeah. Well, next week, SPNN is going to bring you coverage of the Highland Park Scots and the Como Park Cougars. I think that's next week's game. I, I believe it is. And uh, Highland Park, we showed you on... Last Friday's game, very oh. well played game against the Humboldt Hawks. Joe Kubazeski, who, by the way, we interviewed uh, before the game, anticipating a big game, didn't disappoint. No, Came up with not. what was it? Four touchdown passes. I think it was yeah. It was one one rushing touchdown. He was the Pioneer Press Metro Player of the Week. Well, in Highland getting back on track, I saw yesterday a big win for them over Harding, fourteen to twelve. Uh, rare low scoring game involving the Scots. You usually think of big offense when you think of them, but they were able to pull out a low scoring nail biter yesterday, a big win for them. We'll share a couple of statistics from the first half from our very able and professional statistician for tonight's game, Michael Abramson, former outstanding tennis player at Henry Sibley High School in Mendota Heights. Some of the key players we talked about throughout the game, Adrian Perryman, uh, just two carries, 16 yards. None of these statistics are going to overwhelm you. Raheem Shabazz has had some effective rushes, five carries, 57 yards. As we mentioned, they've spread out the ball pretty well offensively, has Central. Number five, Marquise Thompson, two carries, 27 yards. For the Arlington Phoenix, their featured back, Thomas Durham, six carries, 15 yards. He hasn't had much running room at all. No. Uh, ben Campbell scrambling out of the pocket, four carries for 22 yards. So yeah, most of Arlington's big plays have come on runs by Campbell. They just haven't had much room to do anything. It's been a great effort by the central defense thus far. Thanks again to Michael Abramson for those statistics and I was also going to touch on one thing you mentioned earlier about some of the close things we've uh, close games we've seen and how anything can happen and you know I, I think in the St. Paul City Conference you see a lot of these evenly matched teams and you don't know exactly how they're going to come out on any given week you know you see Arlington they came off a couple of bad efforts and then they came back beat Como last week and playing pretty competitively this week and you never know exactly what's going to happen with some of these teams well check out the standings and in the uh, Pioneer Press. The next time they publish them, you'll see it's just a tremendous log jam. St. Paul Johnson, of course, kind of running away with things at this point on top of the city conference. They are undefeated, 4-0. And then you see a lot of teams kind of right in the middle there, 1-3. and three. Central, Highland, Harding. 
Humboldt Hawks open the season with a, with a victory, and they've had a couple of close games. Como Park with one victory on the season. Yeah, I, I, catch me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think there are any winless teams no. in the conference this year. Everybody's come up with a W. Well, things don't get any e easier for Arlington next week. See, they take on... They take on Creighton? I think they play Creighton already. Johnson. Johnson then. probably next week. I had a chance to see Johnson earlier the year against Highland Park. and Boy, I think that team's for real. A lot of people look into the last game of the regular season when Johnson takes on the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders right here from Griffin Stadium. And There's a lot that of, to be a, a great ball game. A lot of build up to that one. The and this press box you're looking at will be full. Yes, of it press. will. And a lot of people, a lot of people excited about that one. The Johnson players very excited and wearing patches saying 101002, the date of the game with Creighton, and it, it should be a fun one to watch. Well, St. Paul Johnson was the last public school city conference team to win a title. 1995, they were the champions of the St. Paul City Conference. And, of course, Creighton now out of the city conference. The games they are playing right now are non-conference games. But it still means playing. a great deal to yeah. the kids. Still playing a pretty heavily heavy St. Paul schedule this year. Later on, they'll move out spread out more across the metro area in terms of the games they play, but. Well, we're about ready to get things started here in the second half. Central leading 12-0. Captains meeting out on the field and we're gonna be underway shortly. going to get the ball. Yep, they won the toss, as we mentioned, and elected to kick, so they will start with the ball. Well, our friend and broadcast partner, Coley McDonough, always points out that the opening drive of the second half is such a key possession in a football game, and certainly... It's going to be a key possession for the Arlington Phoenix as they try to get some momentum here. Yeah, just, Certainly well within reach in this game. They're only down 12-0. Yeah, even if they can't put points on the board, I think at least get it into central territory, establish that they can move the ball and do something against the central defense, which has had them pretty bottled up here in the first half. Well, as we pointed out, both coaches had a lot to say most likely in the locker room, and we'll see if the turnovers and mistakes are cut down a bit in this half. And again, that unusual kickoff formation, and Arlington gonna field it at about the 20 yard line, having some problems with the handle, getting the handle on it, out to about the 25 yard line. It's number 28, Anthony Patterson. Patterson just couldn't pick up the ball. Yeah, had trouble, muffed it initially, and then had trouble picking it up off the ground, and a little bit dejected there, heading back to the sideline, slapping the helmet, but. Don't hit yourself too hard there. Gotta get back in the ball game. Well, not bad field position anyway. Ball at the 25 yard line, and Arlington gonna try to get something going offensively. It'll They've be had... interesting to see what packages they came up with to try to stop that blitz. Dan Riley split wide to the right side. Central showing blitz, and now they back off. A little delay to the tailback, but nothing doing. Good tackle up front that time. Number 77, Cornelius Tolbert. Durham, maybe a yard. They actually have it on the scoreboard as a loss of a yard, second and 11, but Arlington having trouble running that ball up the gut. Central's got a lot of people there to stop it. 
Ben Campbell in at quarterback. He's the emergency replacement. Giovanni Cabrera out with an illness, and Campbell stepping in. And he's under big pressure. He throws it up. This might have been tipped, and it's incomplete. I'm not sure if that was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That was an awfully high pass. And once again, Campbell just under intense pressure. Yeah, we'll see if we can see if the ball was tipped here. Thrown into a crowd. Campbell in the first half. Four out of 13, just 27 yards and an interception. But all it takes is one big connection. And Dan Riley is capable of taking it into the end zone for a touchdown. Is Riley on Perryman again on the bottom of the screen. And a whistle and a flag. And whomever this penalty is on, it's going to add to the frustration level and another delay of game penalty. Well, we've seen a couple of those, Dan. And yeah, that's, that's surprising. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. How it? If they're having trouble getting the plays in, maybe Campbell unfamiliar with some of the with some of the play names. But we've seen that a couple times from Arlington, once from Central as well. Well, the other thing that really hurts Arlington is you, you want to have as many as your best athletes on the field and. Uh, what they'd really like to have is Cabrera at quarterback and have Campbell and Durham in the backfield. You have three options. Campbell can do okay at quarterback, but then you lose that other option, yeah. and that's the situation they're in. Third down and 16. Central again yeah, we've got showing more blitz and another penalty. Don't tell me this is another delay of game. I don't think I've ever seen again. two in a row. I don't think I have either. Well, frustration certainly boiling on the Arlington sideline. We mentioned having the weapons taken out. A problem team like Arlington runs into, not a lot of depth. It's hard to plug someone in there. Well, third and 21. Now you got to certainly be aware of, a, of an interception because they're going to throw it downfield. And this ball is tipped and nearly intercepted. Pass intended for Riley. Once again. A, and it looked like Chris D Gustafson, number 50, getting in there and tipping it. Yeah, Gustafson's played well, dropping back in the linebacker spot, spot, and you'll see on the replay, actually decent protection, but Gustafson read that well. And that'll bring up fourth down. 10.55 to go in the third quarter. Just underway here in the second half. Uh, you talked about that first drive, and that's definitely not what Arlington would have wanted to see there. Oh, but another central mistake, roughing the passer. And Arlington's gonna get a first down and that's gonna add to the frustration of Scott Howell on the central sideline. So the mistakes continue here early on in the second half. We're gonna have to rename this game Mistake Bowl 2002. Yeah. Both teams just keep handing opportunities back to each other. Here, Arlington was backed up a fourth and a mile and now an automatic first down. And Boy, Scott Howells has to be fuming on the sidelines. Durham off to the left side. Durham forward for about four yards on the carry. You know, sometimes, Dan, we do these broadcasts here, and the coaches make copies of the film, and they show it to the players, and they, you know, everybody uses it. Kind of a feel-good highlight film, especially if you win. I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of copies circulated yeah. in this game so far. I don't know if I'm, I would want to sit in on any film sessions for these teams a, a couple days from now. There's going to be some unhappy coaches. Pitch back goes to Durham. Durham looking for a block. Durham to about the 45-yard line. Clock continues to tick. About two minutes into the third quarter. You may have picked up the coaches yelling, on the sidelines run, they're looking for Durham to lower his head, but he's been pretty much running into brick walls yeah. all game. Here you see on the replay, Central doing a good job of stretching it out, but they're kind of waiting for him to turn the corner and he never really did. And he kind of paid for it there at the end. Well, Durham's been nursing some injuries. He had some shoulder problems and that may be affecting 
him in this game as well. We saw a big run in the opening game of the season that was called back, and then a shoulder injury a little bit later in the game. Yeah. And here's Durham. This time he does lower his head forward. Two yards on the pickup. Arlington players trying to fire up the offense. Well, yeah, having trouble getting anything going. They've been helped out by some of the mistakes, but Durham hasn't had anywhere to go. The rush has been in Campbell's face. And I like the sound of that. Yeah, that's a good sound. Well, Arlington would prefer to hear the sound of a touchdown going across the goal line. Pitch back to Durham. Durham has a hole. Durham is hit from behind. A big hit. He's short of the first down, but there he had a big hole to work from. And that looked like Cornelius Tolbert coming in and making the play for Central. Number 77 as we'll look at it here. Durham has a nice hole. Good blocking there up front. Just as he thinks he's got the first down, Tolbert, the freshman, coming in with a nice hit. And stopping Durham about a yard shy of the first. Third call at one. You know, I wonder, Dan, if they might be setting up for the halfback option. They're pitching the ball back to Durham. Central coming up the line to key on him. Certainly the coaches will be looking at that as an opportunity. They need something here. Third and one. Yeah, and some more movement. I'm not so sure there, though, Central didn't cross the line first. Yeah. You know, again, you pick up from the field. One of the coaches yelling, come on, use your head. Well, this time it's on Arlington. I, I thought for a moment that Central might have crossed yeah, the line first. There's been an early flinch there or something causing them to, but. I don't know if we can pick it up on the replay or not, but. Well, yeah, I saw the left tackle stand up, but. Oh, it must, he must have stood up before the Central player crossed the line of scrimmage. Anyway, they'll bring up third and six. That's just another costly one. Had third and one, could try to grind it in. Now they got to probably throw it. And a big rush. Campbell is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Ball is loose. It is picked up by the Central Minutemen, and they will take over at the 15-yard line. Marquise Thompson scooping up the fumble. Well, Campbell had nowhere to go, and, you know, you almost want to take a sack here. Yeah, it's maybe an inexperienced quarterback there. You just got to go down, eat the sack. He's not going to be going anywhere. Instead, just trying to fight, leaves that ball loose and Central able to punch it out. Dan Riley saving the touchdown there with that tackle. Well, let's see what Central does with it here. Again, every time you think this game's gonna be broken wide open, something happens to keep it close. Pitch back to the right side. Oh, Cobbins, nothing there. Lawrence Erskine kind of sealing off that hole. As Cobbins stopped for no gain. Central up 12 nothing, but as we've mentioned, it could be a much different score on either side. Either Arlington could be winning or Central could be winning by a lot more. It has been a strange one here tonight at Griffin Stadium. Barry split wide to the left side. Perryman at the top of your screen. And this give goes to Shabazz off the right side. Shabazz just bowling over tacklers near a first down. Boy, Raheem Shabazz just lowered his head and gave himself a couple of extra yards. And about a yard short of the first down, but watch at the end of this play. Right there, he's he just fights off Dan forward. Riley. Gave Dan Riley a ride. And I don't know if we can get our cameras We've to the very a... far side of the field, but there's uh, some activity in the uh, far corner. A little collision in the backfield. Shabazz forward for a couple of yards. I was able to fight for the first down there. Uh, 
Not sure what was going on on the other side of the field. But... Meantime, it's first down. Ball set at the four yard line. Central trying to open up a big lead. This is Shabazz around the right side. Shabazz is into the end zone for the touchdown. Raheem Shabazz from four yards out. And the Minutemen take the lead. And here you see in the replay, Shabazz, Shabazz. on the outside. So a heavy dose of the running game there for, from Central gets them into the end zone. And we will see Toby Adion for the extra point, who's already made a field goal in tonight's game. And he threads it. And that increases the Minutemen lead to 19 to nothing. 6.14 to go in the third quarter. And now I think Ar Arlington's going to need something to happen here to, if they want any chance of coming back. Now up to 19 points, they're going to need to get moving a little bit. Well, as coaches will tell you, it's one thing to lose if you're outplayed, if you're out muscled, if you're out hit. Boy, it's another thing when your own mistakes, your own turnovers, your own uh, just misplays uh, put you in a hole. And I think that's the thought of the Arlington coaches right here. And to take nothing away from Central, they've certainly taken advantage and uh, been a very opportunistic team, although they've had their share of turnovers. But uh, really, Arlington can't be happy with their play at this point. Oh. And this is Durham at the 20. Durham slips to about the 35-yard line. That's where Arlington will take over. And keep in mind, that last touchdown was set up by a sack and a fumble by uh, Ben Campbell, which gave Central the ball deep in Arlington territory. And you can only count on your defense so much. Yeah, the defense has been up to the challenge, but you've got some of those hard-hitting running backs, and you get tired by the end of the game, and they... They don't rotate a lot of people in and out. So you keep that defense on the field too long and it's not a good situation. They need to try to sustain some type of drive here. So from the 34 yard line, Dan Riley in motion to the bottom of your screen. Once again, another flag. Durham off the left side. And tell you what, this game's getting a little bit ugly, especially with these penalties. Yeah, that first quarter moved along really quickly. I commented on that, but we are seeing a lot of penalties here since then. And let's see what the call is. Uh, once again, motion on the offense. Central going to decline it. It'll be second down and 10. They were stopped for no gain on the play anyways. Actually, maybe even lost a yard on it. Well, once again, that front four for Central doing a great job up front. Campbell. He's got Riley in oh. and out of the hands. Man alive, Dan Riley wants that one back as well. He may have been looking towards the corner of the end zone because had he caught it, he may have zigzagged his way in for a score. Yeah, he had an opening. You see the throw here right on the money from Campbell. Right in the seam. And Riley, yep, he just getting going a little bit too early there. Had his mind on the big gain and unfortunately can't hang on to the ball. That'll bring up third and 10. Four wide receiver formation. Once again, another flag, Luke Kabat is hit just as the ball reaches him. Gustafson in on that play again. He's had a good game so far. And let's see what the call is. Legal procedure against Arlington. Well, 
That penalty is declined. So Arlington will have to bring on the punting team again. Well, it's just one of those nights for the Arlington Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, uh, early on, it, they were in this ball game. They're certainly not out of it now. They're down 19 nothing, but they cannot get anything going offensively, and they are just killing themselves with penalties and turnovers. Yeah, like you mentioned, you never want to lose on your own mistakes. And what There's happens a here? Snap. A bad snap from center. Durham is going to be buried for a loss. He tries to throw the ball, but either way, it's going to be central ball deep in Arlington territory. And, boy, you just see this thing sliding further and further away from Arlington. Yeah. And Durham did as best he could to make something happen, but you don't often see good things happen on a, on a bad snap from center. And almost turned into a disastrous play. Well, the frustration you were, you were probably too young, starting to but You remember the Super Bowl back in about 73, Gary Yepremian on a similar play. With the Dolphins? Field goal. Yeah, he threw the ball and it intercepted Washington. Uh, I think it was Mike Bass went for a touchdown. Yeah, a risky play, and you gotta think the frustration just starting to build now for Arlington here. Little delay up the middle. Nothing doing that time. Looks nice like play by the the fullback McIntosh up the middle, but Mike Bellamy on the tackle for Some more anger there on the Arlington sideline. Well, they're just trying to hold it together here. Borer, screen pass caught by Cobbins. Cobbins to the 40. Cobbins to the 35 yard line. A lot of running, but Minimal not game. much. For, yeah, not much forward progress there. That was a lot of moving around for a four-yard gain. Third and ten, Perryman actually checking out here. Danielson wide to the left side. Horror over the middle. Danielson off his hands and nearly intercepted. Patterson had a chance. But the ball just deflected the other way. See Borer here, a pretty strong throw. A little bit high, and Danielson can't make the play, and Patterson a little frustrated as well. That was a little high, but once again, you want your receivers to hang on to the ball. Yeah. Especially if it hits your hands. It may have looked up a little bit. Fourth down, central. Looks like they're just going to throw it downfield. Boy, that little statue of liberty to Perryman. Perryman has some running room, but he will be short of the first down, and the Phoenix will take over. So Arlington able to take over on downs. Perryman can't convert. As we see it here, a little misdirection may have had Arlington fooled initially, but they do a nice recovery job. And number four, Justin Jones, getting in on the tackle. You gotta have that number memorized. Yeah. Nice play by Justin, our halftime guest. Technically our pregame guest, run at halftime. Yeah. 3.53 and counting. And Arlington been plagued by penalties and turnovers. and illegal procedures. Little delay to Durham. Durham off the left side. Durham has the first down. Durham still running and he's knocked out of bounds. Nice run there by, by Durham. One of the first significant runs Arlington's been able to put together there. As Thomas Durham able to find the outside, hitting the hole hard and then making a couple nice moves. 
Nice seal block. Lowering the shoulder there. And that's good for the first down. Durham, 5'8", 160 pound senior. He's one of the captains of the Phoenix. But he hasn't had much running room tonight. As you point out, that was perhaps his best run of the night. Again, they keep it on the ground. Squirts forward to the 40 yard line. That'll bring up second down. Ticking down to three and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. 19 nothing Central. And Arlington trying to get something going offensively here. Thomas Durham checking out. From the 40 yard line. Campbell under big pressure. Campbell better get rid of it. Campbell is gonna get buried. Oh, it's he buried. Nothing Boy. doing again. Boy, Campbell just running for his life and showing a lot of courage there. Holding on to the football as long as he did. Well, Central has just done such an excellent job with the blitzes, not only getting the pressure on Campbell, but also probably forcing quite a few of those illegal procedure penalties as you see our replay dates for this game if you want to catch it again. Third and seven. Again, big rush, big rush. Little screen is caught by Durham, but he will be well short, in fact, beyond the behind the line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up a first down. Well, I don't mean to be sarcastic here, but you have to look at the positive. At least Arlington didn't have any of the penalties in that yeah. last series. I mean, they were having a hard time getting the plays in and getting the procedure penalties under control. But uh, as you say, our Central, they come after you and they're swarming on defense. Certainly you have the advantage when you're up 19 to nothing. Play a little softer coverage. Well, they had some trouble with the last snap. Durham standing on his 30 yard line. They also had a punt blocked earlier in the game. And again, another low snap, and this one is underway. He gets it off. And it turns out to be a pretty good kick. All the way to the 21-yard line. Here you see one of the Phoenix trying to give it a little bit of air underneath it. Miracle Betta. But that was nearly blocked as well. Well, Durham, you talked about the punting trouble, but that's the second time Durham stood in there under pressure and made a pretty good kick. He's been heady. You see the low snap again, another one hopper, but scoops it up and quickly gets off a pretty nice kick. You know, in the NFL, in college, you talk about, does he have a two-step or a three-step? That was a no-step. He yeah. got that ball and just kicked it, and end over end got a pretty good bounce. Look at a miracle better right there. Go, 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 go. Central nice taking over at their own 21. Or throws that screen off the hands of Adrian Perryman. A lot of drops. Great call, great call. You know, you keep showing those replay dates. I'm not sure we're going to have quite as many orders for this game. Yep. But we do appreciate those who help bring this game to you, our very generous sponsors, and we very sincerely thank them. Liberty State Bank, Danny Boys, Cheeseburgers, Metro Athletics, and the good folks down at Schmidt's. Sports Barbers. Our score in this one, 19 to nothing. Central leads. And a little delay to Cobbins. Cobbins up the middle. Melvin Cobbins has the first down to the 39 yard line. And that wakes up the Central crowd a bit. Melvin Cobbins. For Cobbins there. Central continuing to get it done on the ground. With Shabazz, Thompson, and Cobbins. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
About an 18 yard run there. And again, they keep another ground to Cobbins. Cuts to the middle of the field. Velvin Cobbins still on his feet. Eight yards on the pickup to the 48 yard line. Well, now things really opening up for Central offensively. And you wonder if Arlington getting worn down, not just physically, but perhaps mentally as well. Yeah, trying to fight through some of the mistakes, and you got these running backs coming at you all the time. Justin Jones dragging him down, but it took a lot of effort, and I think we're going to be seeing a heavy dose of Cobbins, Thompson, and Shabazz the rest of the game. Out of the eye formation. Second and two. Once again, this is Cobbins. Cobbins trying to turn the corner, and a great play. Justin Jones again. Justin Jones catches Cobbins before he can turn the corner. And he may have lost a couple of yards in that play. I think he did. Well, it'll be the final play of the third quarter. Central getting one touchdown. That's it for the scoring. And the Minutemen lead it 19 to nothing after three. Well, I think both coaches at this point want to have a final quarter of mistake-free football yeah. so they can end this game on a positive note. Of course, uh, no matter which way uh, the fourth quarter goes, the Central stays on top. It'll certainly end positive with a victory. You'll take one any time, but uh, certainly they're not happy with their performance and some of the uh, turnovers. As you said, a win's a win, but you want to keep the momentum going for the next week, and you continue to have all these penalties, drop passes, gets you in a bad rhythm, and you don't want to let those things become a habit as the season goes along, especially when you get into crunch time, heading into the section playoffs, things like that. Things tighten up a little bit. You don't have room to make some of those mistakes, and I think, like you said, for, uh, for Arlington especially, even if they can't pull out this game tonight, I think they just want to see some mistake-free football in the fourth quarter and hopefully get things back on track for next week. And Central will start with the ball at their own 45. They will have third down coming up. Third and five. Let's see if Arlington can come up with a big defensive play here. Central keeps the ball on the ground. Shabazz has the first down and a lot more into the secondary to the 39-yard line. Raheem Shabazz. Lowering that shoulder, shoulder again. Third down, you give it to the bruising back and you see Shabazz here. Just finding his hole. Getting away from the couple tackles there and then just lowering his head and running over the defender for a couple extra yards. Well, before the game, Scott House said, you know, we're, we're not gonna do anything fancy here. We're just gonna run it simple and see what we can do up front. And that's certainly the game plan at this stage in the game. But Shabazz again, two yards to the 38 yard line. 11-24 and counting in this game. Central spread things out offensively. And no one player you can really point to is the key, the key player in this game. Cobbins has a touchdown and, and a couple nice runs, but they've been mixing it up among the running backs. Once again, it's Shabazz off the right side. Jones dragging him from behind, but he just moves the pile forward. Raheem Shabazz. He's had a good career here at St. Paul Central. Made some big plays over the years. And again, he had a big game against Creighton Durham Hall. 10 tackles. Second down and five. Again, eye formation, they just keep coming at you. Shabazz off the right side. 
Shabazz still moving, still churning his legs forward, and he has the first down. Raheem Shabazz is just not denied there up the middle. It takes about two or three Arlington players to bring him down just about every time. Well, sometimes it's about desire. And watch Shabazz. Boy, one hand. It's hopping forward on one leg, basically. And he is just fighting for every yard he can get. Well, I, I tell you what, I give credit to Shabazz and that one. It wasn't exactly poor tackling. Arlington was hitting him low, but just showed such, showed such great balance. Borer is pretty much keeping it on the ground. Pitch back to the left side. Looking for a block is Thompson. Pick up about three on that last carry. And not a big game, but as I mentioned before, it's just got to be tough to adjust if you're that Arlington defense. You're seeing Shabazz knocking you over up the middle, and then all of a sudden you've got the speedy Thompson coming around the corner here. I think the only thing Scott Howe would prefer is if Thompson stays inbound with the lead. Yeah. Certainly don't need to stop the clock. And that's what happened. Second and seven. Three yards again on that last pickup. And they're just going to continue to grind it out. And as soon as I say that, they throw the ball off to Perryman, and he drops the ball. Let's see, that could be a fumble. Riley falls on it, and it is Arlington football. A uh, tough game offensively for Perryman. That's two, two throws now. Looks like he's getting started early, trying to use that great speed he has, push it into the end zone. But he's not letting the ball come in there, and the ball's slipping out of his hands. Dropped a pass earlier, and there's a fumble, and once again, Central's moving it, but they can't score because of the turnover. Well, sometimes you just have to forget about a game and, and, and move on, and uh, you know, both teams have reasons to try and put this one behind them. 19 to nothing is our score. Pitch back to Durham. Durham in the backfield. Durham got nowhere to run. Well, once again, that's big number 77, Cornelius Tolbert. Not giving Thomas Durham any place to go. Duncans was the Duncans first. in there as well, first one to hit him. Loss of five on that last play. Under nine minutes to go here from Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. Todd Johnson along with Dan Flanagan. Michael Abramson on the statistics for us tonight. We should have had Mike counting penalties. Got more penalties than receptions. Campbell out of bounds and a couple of flags. Now we've gone a while without a penalty, but a couple ones flying here. Try to pick it up. Holding against Arlington. Oh my goodness. Oh look, keep in mind, these are high school kids out here. They're not professional athletes. They're not collegiate athletes. And they're just having a tough time tonight. As one of those games happens to everybody, any sport, you're gonna have some great ones and you're gonna have, have some tough ones. And as you mentioned, you just try to move on. By the way, I think the Vikings have had three tough games. Three very tough ones yeah. in a row. Third and 12. Again, big pressure. Durham. Pass is incomplete. Durham had a chance, but Thompson was coming his way. We do have a flag down here. Once again, the legal procedure on Arlington Central is certainly going to decline this penalty. And that is indeed what will take place. Now the play waved off here. And Durham standing at about his 14-yard line. 
And this has been an adventure all night. And he gets this one off, a high spiraling kick. Takes a Arlington bounce. This time the central players move away from the ball. And Arlington will down it at the 49-yard line. 8.13 to go from Griffin Stadium in St. Paul. Our score, the Central Minutemen 19, the Arlington Phoenix nothing. Sometimes, Dan, we have to be honest and say that this has not been a particularly well-played game. No. Uh, both teams certainly given it 100% effort, but something in the air tonight yeah. is... So this has ended up with uh, flags flying all over the field, turnovers, interceptions, drives stalled, and it's been that way from start go, to nearly fans. finish. Well, I'm sure it's something they'll, they'll talk about this week in the practices and just hope they can remedy the situation, but it's probably just one of those nights. Cobbins. Unofficially 14 penalties from the able pad and paper of Michael Abramson, our statistician tonight. And I don't know if there's been more, they've simply waved off. Five yards in that last pickup. Second down in five. Perryman in motion to the near side. Cobbins looking for a block. Cobbins has a hole. Cobbins has the first down. Plenty of mistakes to share by both teams. Unofficially eight penalties on Arlington, six on Central. And a reminder to purchase a copy of this program, send $25 to SPNN at 214 East 4th Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55101. Specify the game and date as you see on your screen and pick up a copy of this one. Arlington trying to strip the ball loose, but Shabazz is hanging on, and he goes forward for a couple more. Central just running down the clock now as much as they can. Clicking down towards 6.45 to go. Protecting that 19 point lead. Well Dan, at the conclusion of this game, both teams like to meet with their players on the field, so I don't know that we're gonna get an opportunity to talk to the winning coach. Cobbins, big hole up the middle. Velvin Cobbins finally brought down at the 15-yard line. Another nice run by Cobbins there. Quite frankly, yes. I'm not sure anyone's going to be in much of a mood to discuss this ball game. Yeah. But look, let's give Central credit. They've been the opportunistic team. Fought through the adversity and got the win and appear to get the win here. Still a little bit of time to go, but Looks like Arlington's defense getting a little bit tired here as these holes getting a bit bigger now for the central running backs to run through. They've been on the field a lot. Shabazz off to the left side. Shabazz gets a block. Shabazz to the 10. Shabazz to the corner and Shabazz is out of bounds. In the far corner, looks like at about the four yard line. Watch this block right here on Riley. Nice block that time by Thompson. Thompson, not a very big running back, but getting involved downfield, getting the block. You like to see that. Some of the skilled players getting downfield, and helping out blocking. Cobbins, the lone setback. Perryman in motion. This is Cobbins. Cobbins near the goal line. Bring up second down. Well, if you've been with us from the start, perhaps a bad omen. We came into this game missing the opening kickoff. And everything's been a little unsettled ever since. Central. 
Central just trying to punch it in here now. Second and goal from about the two yard line. Shabazz into the end zone, but no surprise. Flag on the play. So let's wait and see the call. And here it comes. Oh, there's that illegal block again. And that's going to infuriate Scott Howell. Yeah, Scott Howell side. doesn't look too happy over there. That was there. the same penalty. And Scott, of course, waving his arms in disgust on the far sidelines. That's the same call he made at the end of the first half. Well, yeah. It gets back to what he said at halftime. Every time we get something going, it gets called back. And it's just some of the frustration. Directing some of it at the officials, probably some of it at his own players, but. Well, that'll bring it back, all the way back to the 17 yard line. Four and a half minutes to go in this one. See if they try that screen again. Pitch back to Cobbins. Cobbins gets a block. Cobbins to the 10. Cobbins to the eight yard line. There you see in the replay, Central just coming, coming up with too much firepower. Yeah, they're able to rotate those guys in, keep them somewhat fresh, and they're moving a little faster, hitting a little harder than the Arlington defense is right now. We can set the wide receivers for you, but it's been all on the ground. And as soon as I say that, Borer drops back to pass, and he is sacked for a loss. Looked like Lawrence Erskine getting in there for the sack, number 88. Can you imagine that? I'm about to say, you know what? I'm not going to tell you who the wide receivers are on the play, because they're just going to run it. What do they do? Drop back to pass. Is there a full moon tonight? I don't know. It, there should be. Nothing well, going according to plan tonight. Well, they're going to go for the field goal. Let's see. This is a. Uh, About a 35 yarder, and this one's going to come up a bit short. But I think we might have a running into the kicker here. You've got to be kidding me. What else? What else can we see here tonight? I know you didn't quite see it on the replay. Toliati. He was down on the ground after the kick. And well, the repeat fourth down. Well, and he's going to move it in a little bit closer. If the officials weren't well versed in the rule book, they probably are now. Toliati will kick it again. We see a timeout called by Central with 3.02 remaining. You just wonder what's going to happen here in the final 302. Just a game coaches will uh, will have to forget. And this time they're just going to run a forget the field goal. We're going to run an offensive play. Fourth and ten. Let's see if they try to get the ball to Perryman. Borer looks left, throwing them to the corner, and he's got it for the touchdown. Marquise Thompson. Well, Thompson was really almost by himself in that far corner. Yeah, Miley was the nearest man. They go to the pass, and it works. 
Thompson not really covered as you see it here. Borber just kind of throws it up top for him. Riley got spun around, but obviously uh, perhaps a blown coverage. So Toliati in for the point after. And this one is up and in. So 26 to nothing now in favor of Central with 2.56 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Well, you try to make each game a learning experience and certainly a lot of frustration on the side of Arlington but this is a young team a lot of young players yeah we see what just about to every, grow from every from team we cover there's freshmen and sophomores contributing and just let these guys learn from their mistakes and hopefully they'll be better for it in the long run And once again, Central lining up with their, I don't know what to call it, double wing special teams line up and watch them do a crisscross here. I mean, it looks interesting for an onside kick, but very low, short kick. Fielded at the 35 yard line and. Seeing some players slip here on the kickoff returns. Obedo losing his footing there. And Arlington will get it at about their own 38-yard line. Here you take a look at Obeda. Looked like he was, had a little steam running here, but. Trying to make a little cut there. And you see right there in the middle of the field, pretty him. worn out. Campbell has protection. And he has his tight end, Kabat, and they're saying no catch. Now from this angle, it looked like he might have had it, but the officials had a better perspective than we did. That'll bring up second down. Luke Kabat, six foot, 190 pound senior. Touchdown last week, but no touchdowns today for the Arlington Phoenix. Well, we spent a lot of time talking about some of the things that have gone wrong, but I think if you're central, one thing you look look forward to uh, look at with some positives is the defense. You know, last week they held a pretty high-powered offense. There's an example of it right there, interception by Marquise Thompson. Thompson to the 20. And But as I was saying, you held a pretty high-powered offense to 28 points, the lowest anybody's held them to, and now... Uh, throw it, uh, with a shutout here so far against Arlington, getting some turnovers. And so I'm sure if you're Scott Howell, you're not happy with a lot of the mistakes, but you've got to look happily at another strong effort from your defense. Well, nothing going Arlington's way. I said that Campbell had protection, perhaps for a moment, but he had some linemen barreling in on him. And that resulted in an interception. So Central now try to widen the lead. And what else? A whistle. And at least this time it's a timeout. So 2.31 to go. Some might suggest mercifully in this game. 26 to nothing is our score. Uh, I'm sure Central just will try to grind it out here, bring this one into the locker room and walk away with the victory. Well, as you said, look, uh, you got to give credit to the winning team, and Central has done some nice things offensively. Yeah, the running backs have looked good. The defenses look good. And 
for Arlington, you know, they're playing with a backup quarterback in Ben Campbell who was able to make some nice plays considering the pressure he was under. And, you know, you know again, they, they were able to get some turnovers and with all the opportunities Central had, they probably could have given up more than 26 points, but they did hold in there and until maybe now that. when they're getting a little bit tired, they, they still fought pretty hard. And so I think both coaches, while there's going to be frustration, there's, there's some positives to look at in this as well. And they give it to the fullback, and he is near the goal line. Ryan McIntosh on the carry. And we'll get a look at the replay. McIntosh, nothing fancy, just straight ahead football. And look at a couple of holes, though, for him. Finally brought down by Justin Jones. Ball setting at about the four yard line. A couple of substitutions in there. And off to the left side and a touchdown. Dorian Taylor. Taylor just, just checked into the game along with Nathan DeVroy. And here you see on the replay, a couple of moves and Taylor able to get into the end zone from about four yards out. That increases the score to 32 to nothing. And the extra point. Oh, another strong kick there. Well, by actually, Tolia. that one, that one they're saying is no good. It looked good from this angle, but it went a little bit wide right. But it's all academic at this point with our score 32 to nothing. If you had to pick out some individual performers, I think Raheem Shabazz, his name comes to mind. 14 carries, 119 yards. Many of those Yards he created on his own. Tough yards, tough running. Velvin Cobbins, a couple of big runs. So no doubt about it, Central's done some nice things, but certainly uh, from the coaching staff perspective, not the kind of complete game that you look for. Yeah. And well, that young man's had a pretty good game. Roosevelt Toliati. 2 0 to go goal. here. 32 nothing Central. Been a nice evening for football. The temperature starting to fall a bit. End over end kick. Campbell going to feel it at the 20 yard line. Campbell sidesteps a tackler. Campbell to the 40 yard line. Campbell to the 42 yard line. Well, they're not going to quit. And Ben Campbell giving it his all. Brings it out to the 42 yard line. You know, sometimes on those squib, squib kicks, you find that holes sometimes form and it kind of throws the timing off and Campbell making something happen. Nice little wedge to run in up the middle. and Ben Campbell, dragged down. senior. Minute 51 in this one. Pitch back to Durham, Durham. Sheds a tackler, Durham to the 48 yard line, ridden out of bounds. Nice tackle. Number 51, D'Angelo Svenkison, another freshman contributor for Central. Well, Central getting some playing time to some of the underclassmen. Still though, Arlington would like to punch one in. Yeah, you always hate to have to go home with a shutout. And if they can at least put a few points on the board, that would be a positive for them. Six yards in that last pickup. Campbell rolls right. And he runs a long way for perhaps a yard. Well, offensively for Arlington, Thomas Durham, 13 carries. 
50 yards. Well, Durham has worked pretty hard for some of those runs. He hasn't had a lot of room to go, but fighting to get a couple yards usually on some on runs with not much to work with. Again, keep in mind, pointed out a couple of times, in case you just joined us, starting quarterback Giovanni Cabrera out with an illness, and that forced Kevin Wolf to shuffle the lineup, and they've had trouble offensively tonight without him. Trouble on the handoff again with Durham. And Central's got it as Svenkison again coming up with the fumble recovery. Well, not the way you want to end your last offensive series of the game, which this very well may have been for Arlington. Now only a minute and a half to go. But you know, Dan, when you don't get a lot of snaps and you don't get a lot of reps, you're at a you're at a disadvantage. Yeah, and Ben Campbell has handled it fairly well, considering you know he's he's not used to the position. And I, I think considering the circumstances, he's still done a pretty good job. He's a tough kid up the middle. Clock ticks. A minute twenty-four to go. Well, sometimes it's when you play a team that's important. Scotty Howell told me that, you know, they may have caught Harding at the right time in defeating them. Harding playing well here as the season progresses. Big win over Highland Park. Well, actually, I think Highland beat Harding, but. Big win for Central over Harding. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Another flag on the play. I mentioned earlier that game was forfeited. There's some new eligibility rules the Minnesota State High School League has instituted. And there's been confusion from a number of teams. Uh, Central, or I should say Creighton Durham Hall had a problem uh, with a player ruled ineligible. Central, the same thing. And they were uh, forced to forfeit that game. 35-27 win. And perhaps they caught Arlington on the, the right night as well because Arlington struggling here. But it doesn't matter in the end, in the win column, a win is a win. And even if you win ugly, they'll take that any day. Well, Nathan DeVroy, the new quarterback, just takes a knee and that should do it. The coaches for Arlington moving out onto the field, but we may have one more snap. Well, clock continues to tick, and that was the And that final will be the, the final game. play. Final play of the game. And that's all in this one. As Kevin Wolf comes to the far sidelines to congratulate Scott Howell. And it's back to the drawing board for both of these teams. Central certainly happy, as we pointed out, with the victory. Final score, Central 32, Arlington nothing. Recap, recap briefly, 40 yard touchdown run. Delvin Cobbins gave Central the early lead. 28 yard field goal by Roosevelt Toliati increased the lead to 10 to nothing. Safety increased the lead to 12 to nothing. Number of opportunities. Arlington unable to capitalize on some chances in the red zone. Central as well, a number of opportunities. In a 53 yard run called back. Shabazz had a four yard touchdown, made it 19 nothing. And then the floodgates opened up Borer to Thompson, made it 25 to nothing, and Taylor kept it off with a four yard touchdown run, and that was our final score, 32 to nothing.
Well, on behalf of our entire crew, our statistician tonight has been Michael Abramson. For Dan Flanagan, I'm Todd Johnson saying thank you again for joining us. And so long from James S. Griffin Stadium, as you can see on your television screen, our final score, the Central Minutemen, 32, the Arlington Phoenix, nothing. Good night, everybody.